The Creative History of the Netherworld. The Netherworld was born out of a promise that George Gissing made directly after his wife's death. Marianne Harrison had died alone and in poverty and in clearing her room George Gissing felt um, deeply moved by the deplorable state that her life had eventually descended into. His wife, Marion Harrison, known as Nell, had at a young age become a prostitute and whilst at university George Gissing had encountered her, fell in love with her and eventually decided to marry her. Nell had had the difficult experience as a young girl in her teens of her mother remarrying and finding herself at odds with her new stepfamily, her new stepfather. And she left home with the intention of working, uh, earning her living by sewing, which it was just about possible to do, although hard to maintain a, 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 um, a viable income as, as an independent sewer. The result was, as the result was for so many girls and also girls who went into the dressmaking uh, trade and who did apprenticeships as dressmakers and worked um, as dressmakers within these sort of sweatshops as they were. Um, in the end, uh, Marianne turned to prostitution to um, survive, really. Her marriage to George Gissing was not really a successful one. Gissing was probably motivated in part by an irrepressible attraction to, to Nell, but also probably um, from out of a, a feeling that he could rescue her from the life that she was in. She was a particularly pretty um, and attractive young woman. Um, he probably thought that he could rescue her and that by educating her and taking her under his wing he could turn her into um, a wife who would be able to fulfil the role of supporting middle class husband, rising writer, a man with intellectual pursuits and a certain standard of, of living that he was aiming for. In the event, um, the trials of her early life meant that Nell was caught in a cycle of alcohol abuse, tobacco abuse, she suffered from sexually transmitted diseases, she suffered from bouts of mania, and she suffered, suffered from severe mental health episodes. During the course of their married life together, Gissing expended great personal effort in trying to uh, help Nell to recover and also um, paid for medical treatments, some of which were really quite expensive and especially his own income was not very high at the time to again try to help her escape the consequences um, in terms of her health and in terms of her mental stability that the experiences of her early life had produced. N nothing was to any avail and George Gissing set uh, Nell up in uh, a accommodation in lodgings in Lower Marsh near Waterloo in London uh, with a certain allowance each week for her to survive on. But unfortunately Nell descended into drinking again. Um, the money was nearly always gone before the next allowance came in and she did of course turn to prostitution again to hold body and soul together. In clearing Nell's room in Lower Marsh, uh, Gissing was very moved by the very few possessions that she had, uh, the meagre crust of stale bread that he found in one of the drawers, which we know not how long that, that loaf of bread had, had been her food. Um, he found a picture of himself and various other just very small memorabilia, hardly any clothes, everything had been pawned or sold. Um, and George Gissing made a promise at that time that he would expose the poverty trap um, and within two weeks of his wife fun wife's funeral he began to write the netherworld.
Gissing was overcome by uh, overriding feelings of loneliness during the time of, of writing The Netherworld. And that, that bleakness, that desolateness, I think does come out in the style of writing. There's no direct narration of Nell's life in the novel, but it's possible um, by extrapolation to find many, many of the elements of Nell's life uh, in the histories of different female characters in the novel. Um, for example, Jane Snowden's early experience of living with the Peckovers as their maid of all work or slave, slave of all work or drudge um, <clears throat> perhaps is similar to uh, Nell or Marianne Harrison's early experiences um, where the, she, her mother married a, a stepfather. Um, it, it, it could be that in writing about the violence and the exploitation and the harshness, the emotional harsh, harshness that Jane experiences at this phase of her life in the novel, that uh, he is reproducing things that he knew about uh, Nell's life at that stage. I think probably Jane is about the same age as Nell was when her mother remarried. Nell, uh, sorry, Jane could easily have decided to leave the misery of, of living with the Peckovers to take up uh, work as, as, as a needlewoman. Um, of course, had she done that, prostitution would have been hovering at the door. So there's possibly a feeling for the reader, especially the contemporary reader, that in the circumstances of such misery, Jane might very well just run away and leave, in which case prostitution is, is beckoning. Um, it's perhaps less obvious to the modern reader that that, that would be the case. Uh, so, so in that way, a little bit, Jane's early life mirrors Nell's. Jane as well, in this period of her life where her needs are so entirely eradicated, is so entirely, they're not eradicated, but they're completely ignored. Um, and her life is taken over by the Peckovers. She has no autonomy. Um, and she has absolutely no emotional succour in her life either. So that later on in the novel, um, when expectations about how she should live her life for the rest of her life are imposed upon her by her grandfather, she doesn't object to this. She doesn't have a sense of selfhood that leads her to think, well, that that's not fair or that's not what she wants and she's going to assert something different. Um, and in that way, this early abuse carries over into the psychological capacity that Jane has to uh, determine her own destiny later on in the novel. Um, I won't give the plot away too much, but really Jane never is able to um, assert her right to independent expression for her own life. Clara Hewitt is a character who comes from a family with decent values. Um, she is not unhappy at home, um, but she wishes to escape the poverty that her family lives in. and moves away and eventually takes up a career as an actress travelling around the country. It's more than likely that Clara engages in periods of strategic prostitution uh, in order to carry herself through the uh, leaner times as an actress and also perhaps in order to try and earn enough money to take acting lessons and to educate herself more fully culturally than she um, was able, than she had opportunities to do growing up. Um, so in, in those ways that um, Clara comes from a decent home and at all events makes herself a slightly uh, more cultured, more educated individual from the generality of 
her class as she mirrors uh, Marianne or Marianne Harrison or Nell. Um, but her story is not really the same story, of course. Um, eventually, uh, Clara is unsuccessful in her attempts to escape poverty. She doesn't descend into alcohol alcoholism or tobacco abuse, but she is depressed. Um, I think without a shadow of a doubt. Um, unusually for the period, despite the dubiousness of aspects of her past life, she does find marriage and she does find a family, but it's without passion, it's without happiness, um, it's without her being able to express um, her true nature, her true self. Um, Mrs. Candy, Penny Love's mother, um, her life carries echoes of Nell's life as well in that um, she does descend into alcohol abuse, constantly taking the pledge with the temperance movement to cease to drink, constantly breaking that pledge. Uh, Nell's uh, room in Lower Marsh was, was also full of of pledge cards, pledges that she'd made and not been able to keep. Um, Mrs Candy is severely beaten up by her husband at one point in the novel um, for which he is actually imprisoned and as a result of the, that entire incident deserts her. It's considered that Gissing probably did exert violence towards Nell in the course of their marriage. He may have seen it as a corrective measure um, at the period many husbands did think that their role was to correct their wives. Um, he, in common with many Victorians, may have thought that Nell required moral cor correction in order to be able to leave behind um, the problems of addiction that, that she clearly had. Um, but in today's world where we've developed psychology considerably more than the turn of the last century. Um, of course, we would realise that Nell needed support, not, not correction and not chastisement, uh, for sure. That could only have exacerbated her mental health issues. Penny Loaf, um, as well to some small degree, mirrors uh, Nell's life in that uh, she's earning her living as a piecemeal uh, needlewoman um, and she doesn't descend into prostitution but the man who marries her, Bob Hewitt, uh, marries her in order to rescue her. Um, he rescues her but lands her in an unhappy marriage where uh, he has no actual love for her and where there's perhaps very little temperamental, emotional or intellectual affinity. Bob is really quite clever, just simply, not simply, but unfortunately not, his family did not have the means to help him make the most of his cleverness. Penny Loaf is not probably naturally, uh, intellectually very bright, although again, an early life of malnutrition um, and also lack of education, lack of stimulus. Um, may have really been the underlying causes for that kind of uh, sort of passive, um, passive, passive acquiescence to to life and what happens, rather than sort of the more uh, active or cogent bid to to change things.